All right, looking at a daily chart of the NASDAQ. Welcome to my weekly review. Uh, just a couple of thoughts here. This this index here is in no man's land right now. It made this, um, well, first of all, we had this, you know, breakout from this cup with handle pattern on May 10th, and it had a, you know, an 18% gain up to July 18th. And now it had this 9% retracement here, and it made this bottom on uh, August 18th at 13,161 which was, you know, deemed the pink rally day as it rallied off the lows of uh, 13,161 and closed at 13,290. Um, so that is your low, which retested this, uh, this is a June low from uh, June 26th of uh, 13,334. So it undercut it a little bit. Then it rallied back up. This pink rally day had three days, up days, but it came up to the 50 on uh Thursday and got rejected here and it's been rejected at the moving averages you know this whole uh time and that's what happens in a correction right it cannot rally you know through these moving averages so it's just getting rejected here again at the 50 um I would be bearish if it undercut this 13 uh, 161 here but I'm, I'm going to get to the weekly in a minute on the weekly it's making higher lows you can see the higher low here and that is encouraging. Um, I believe that it's going to, well, I'm just going to take it one day at a time. But what I'm looking for to make me more bearish here, this is what I call no man's land. This would make me bearish if it breaks below this low. And this would make me bullish if it could get across this 50 simple moving average. So it's pretty simple. You know, either it breaks through. And, you know, the more times that it tries, I think the better odds are the probabilities are that one time it's going to break through to it's 50 to the upside. And currently it is 1.6% uh, below. It's um, 50 simple moving average. You look at the weekly chart. Yeah, it looks like a cup with handle. You know, these corrections are designed to shake the weak hands out, and uh, including me. I, I got... I sold my SMCI and my NVIDIA because I, I don't like downturns. Uh, but you could see last week it was up 2.26%. Uh, so, and it's making that higher low that I talked about. This is the low of 13.161 on the 18th. And then last week it had a you know 2.26% gain. Yes, you can see it got rejected there and closed in the middle of the daily of uh, the weekly range but um so like i said it's in no man's land um yet to be resolved you know you just got to take these things one day at a time the s p pretty similar you can see the sell-off made the uh the low on that friday and then rebounded to only to be rejected at the 50 and this is a weekly chart and yes these do look like cup with handles on the weekly so uh there's you know some positives but once again this is um in no man's land uh, this one did not undercut this low of uh june 26th i do not believe of uh, uh 328 4328 no it was 4335 so it came close so a retest and uh you can see on thursday that uh, you know nvidia reported earnings and you know that everything was up in pre-market looked like we're gonna get some pin action and then boom, the selling came because of the big bad wolf, Jay, Jay Powell speaking on Friday. Uh, so it got rejected, closed at the low. The inverted hammer didn't really mean much, got you know some of it back on Friday. Uh, but yeah, if if it trades below this level, then I become more bearish. If it trades through the 50, I become more bullish. So right now I'm kind of neutral, agnostic. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the stocks. I like stocks. Uh, I don't trade indexes, so... I know a lot of people do, but uh, this is Apple broke down after earnings. Looks like it's just forming a base. Once again, made a low on that uh, pink rally day of uh, 171.96 and had a decent week last week. Is This is a weekly review. We'll see it was up 2.36% last week. Not bad. So maybe it's just forming a base. Microsoft looks a lot like the NASDAQ where it, you know, it sold off, made that low, and then rebounded only to be, be uh, you know, rejected at the 50. So, um, you know, things are going to be resolved here in time. You got to be patient. The market is going to test your patience, going to test your discipline. Uh, that's what it does. Uh, here we go. 
So while we're in this correction, this is a meta, same thing. Sell off up to the 50 rejected. Tesla, I want to show the daily chart on the Tesla chart because it's a... Uh, it had this um, bullish island reversal on Monday and then followed through here. Because the high on that day was 232 and then it uh, made 239 on Friday. So Tesla looks a lot better, but it has to rally through these moving averages as well. But uh, that's a positive for the Tesla. The stocks, the only stocks of the grade eight or magnificent, whatever you want to call them, is uh, above the 50 is Google. This one is above its 21. This one actually looks pretty good. Uh, and Amazon is another one that's just right at its 50 here. Traded down on Thursday and then uh, bounced slightly on Friday. So we want to keep that one above the 50. And of course, NVIDIA, <clears throat> which has been in the news a lot, uh, had great earnings, came up to its 500 number. I think it got above it a little bit, you know, 502, and then was rejected. And had a little down day on Friday, but it just came down to its 10 EMA. So that's a really strong stock, 1.2% above the 10 EMA during this NASDAQ correction. So NVIDIA looks good. Like I say, um, you know, it's no man's land. You know, we'll be more bullish above, you know, the moving averages on the index. And we'll be more bearish if it undercuts the low here. So on the NASDAQ, that's what we're looking for. Um, keep Keep it simple, right? I want to, you know, take you down the negative road first and then bring you back on the positive path because we have to acknowledge there's been some negative stuff in the market and there's also been some good stuff. So we'll take the good with the bad, the yin and the yang. Anyway, builders, first source, uh, this one, you know, went from 156 to like 122, uh, you know, in the span of a week or two. And that this is why people in the market get really frustrated because you know nothing, there's been no news. Um, this is probably going to be the future growth prospects are probably going to be affected by the higher interest rates. And so, um, you know, the market's probably just pricing that in. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, your stock is worth what somebody's willing to pay for, just like your house. You think your house is worth a million dollars. The appraiser says it's worth 750 and your top offer is 500,000. Well, your house is worth 500,000 because that's all that somebody's willing to pay for it. Same with stocks. It's worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for it, supply and demand. And uh, uh, there's been some sellers in this stock and um, uh, you know, below the 50, I don't like it. <laughs> so um, this is some of the bad news here in the market. And I do believe this is part of what Jay Powell was talking about on Friday. They, you know, they, they want to see the housing market loosen up a little bit, the jobs market, and um, they want to see some weakness. They want to, <laughs> they want to see you lose your job, uh, and uh, they want to see the home prices come down and become more affordable. This is Dr. Horton. This one sliced its fifty and then followed through to the downside. That doesn't look too good either. Um, Pulte Home sliced the fifty, so. It's not looking good here for these uh, home builders. Uh, TPH, this one was had a real nice run, sliced to 50. Now it looks like it's got momentum to the downside. Uh, GRBK, which is green brick, uh, sliced to 50 a while ago, and then now it's continued to the downside. You can see that it had a nice run, but uh, maybe the, um, the home builder stocks have finally topped out a little bit here. All right, so that's the negative stuff. I'm going to get to some more positive stuff, and I'm going to go to the oil patch because uh, Permian Resources has been a really strong stock. You can see, yeah, I always like stocks that have the ability to show, you know, they've moved, right? This one has moved in the past. Yeah, it pulled back, but it's shown the ability to make these great runs. You know, yeah, it's consolidated for a long time, but now it's starting to move again, so maybe we can get something that looks like like this or something that looks like this. So um, anyway, I'm sticking with Permian. It looks pretty good to me. Um, this is a par a Pacific, a refining uh, stock. You can see this one you know, has the ability to move, big consolidation, then it made a big move. Now it's consolidated and starting to move again. Um, this one looks pretty nice to me uh, on the weekly. Uh, the daily, it's just uh, finding support here at the 10, at 10 EMA. So that's Bar Pacific. It's a refiner. Looks pretty good. 
Um, CRC is another one that I like. Um, you got to look at the weekly. This is a weekly review. And uh, like I said, this one has shown the ability to really move, you know, move, consolidate. Then it makes this big move. Now it's consolidated for a long time and it's starting to move out of this consolidation pattern here. So that's kind of like uh, why I like uh, California resources. Uh, MPC is another one that I like. Uh, this is a daily chart. So you can see the cup uh, pattern and then it tried to break out. Now it's pulled back to its 10 kind of formed a handle there. You can see on the weekly that it looks shows it a little better, but obviously has the ability to move and has, has been appreciating for a long time here. So uh, I'm going to move on here to the um, that's enough of the oil and gas, right? <laughs> I'm going to go to retail. I like retail, but it's really been hit and miss. If you've been paying attention to the earnings reports, uh, this is Elf. Once again, 137 one day and then, you know, down to 114. What's it worth? Well, it's worth what the market's willing to pay for it. Um, this is a growth stock and they they have the ability to move fast. Yeah, 114. Uh, but what I like about Elf is that it, it's staying within character as it pulls back to its 50. And that's kind of what it does, right? It pulls back to its 50. So this one's staying in character and we want to see it supported at the 50, even during this correction and, uh, you know, kind of stabilize and start grinding higher for the little elf. So that that's one that looks good to me. Another retail stock is Celsius. Uh, you know, I got to look at the weekly here. It's a weekly review. You can see that it had this big consolidation and it really went nowhere for a long time. And it finally broke out uh, recently. When was that 122 number back in May? OK, and then uh, gapped up recently on earnings and got support at the 10 EMA. So. That one's a uh, nice looking stock and a, and a big winner. Um, I'm going to move on to some of the, um, okay, I'm going to do Abercrombie and Fitch because they reported earnings, gapped higher, uh, pulled back, but this is definitely uh, one not to be ignored. We'll see if it can uh, allow the moving averages to catch up, but definitely Abercrombie and Fitch is something to watch. But Macy's reported and they talked about theft, you know, kind of like Target and Nordstrom's or uh, these companies are being really hurt by the uh, shrinkage issue. And you can see Macy's. I know people just aren't going to the stores. I mean, they can shop online, right? So Macy's looks bad. Uh, Nordstrom's had a decent report, but then talked about uh, shrinkage and forward guidance. Looks a lot like Macy's department stores uh, look bad. So there's good and bad. And also Ulta reported a good number and it sold off on Friday, which is a little surprising, but you don't like to see these gap downs, you know, after an earnings report. And it's done it uh, uh, twice in a row now. So um, all, all these companies can do those report uh, good numbers. And uh, it's up to the market to decide what they're worth. This is a, the HVAC group. Comfort Systems is one that I, I really like. Uh, just you can see why. I mean, it's base and then it goes up and then it bases and it goes up and base. And now it's just grinding higher. Had a three weeks tight pattern here uh, last week. That's this right in here. And then last week just moved higher. So uh, that one looks good. MOD, Modine or Modine is another one that looks really good. This has been up like 120% this year. You can see it broke out of the base. And now it's just, uh, you know, trending along. It's uh, 21. They're finding support. Here you can see the uh, consolidation here, the breakout, just moving higher. So Modine looks great. Um, LII is uh, our Linux International. You can see that it consolidated for a long time. It's finally starting to move here in 2023. And uh, these, you know, you don't really need to know the reason why. It's just this group is... Uh, is trending higher, right? Um, hopefully, it's at the, you know the earnings and the sales growth, and not just uh, you know some some uh, magic. Uh, car is another one. Uh, this one's uh, pulled back to its fifty recently after the breakout. This one looks good as well. This is a spinoff, um, and it's been performing great since it spun off. I don't know when was it twenty twenty. Uh, anyway, I'm going to move on from the air conditioner uh, unit and talk about some of the data centers because the data centers are really popular here. And this is SMCI. Uh, this one to me looks a little climactic. Well, I'm just looking back at it, you know, because it had this gradual, you know, ascent here. 
it was trending along this trajectory and then boom, went up, pulled back. And then that looks pretty climactic. Maybe not. I mean, it's a 13 billion market cap with 12 billion in sales it was trading like one time sales with $15 in earnings, you know? So, you know, if, if they continue the earnings and sales growth is definitely one to watch, but you can see that after the sell-off is trading pretty wild here. So uh, it tells me that investors don't really know how to evaluate this company right now. Uh, VRT, which is Vertiv Holdings, another uh, data center play with uh, some uh, cooling technology. And you can see this one broke out of its space back here in May, I believe. Was it late May? Yeah. You know, it went from uh, so 17 to uh, 37.50. So that's a nice two bagger since May. So and really in this market with the NASDAQ correcting the way it is, this thing is showing incredible strength. And it broke out recently again, gapped up, I should say, and uh, is holding its gains and uh, just uh, getting support at the 10 EMA. So gosh, you know, it can't, you can't beat it. I mean, it's performing and that's what you want is performance, right? Uh, Quanta services, this one, you just got to look at the weekly on this one, just a grind higher. I mean, this is just, you know, this this is a very quiet stock, not a lot of movement, but, you know, you look back, you know, three months from now, it'll probably be, you know, a couple percent higher. And that's just kind of the way this one trades. Um, it's got some solid growth numbers, but uh, definitely one that I like. And, and you know, that 206.43 is intriguing here as it forms this little flat base. I think it had a five weeks uh, tight pattern here. So I like it above that 206.43. Uh, another one here. This I'm just going through the you know construction data center. Uh, Caterpillar, another one. Got to look at the weekly here, Marty. Yeah, nice little base here. Gap higher and then pulled back. So you know during this correction here, maybe um, you know, it's pulling back on lighter volume. Maybe it's providing an opportunity. Um, another one is uh, PRIM. Uh, Primora is kind of thinly traded, but. Uh, Definitely performing well. You can see the big consolidation here and the breakout moving higher. So um, and you can't argue with stocks that are performing well in this uh, current tape. And I'm going to move on to, uh, I'm going to, well, no, I'm going to go to the software stocks because some of them are making new highs and it's, it's really hit and miss. Some of them are really getting hammered. But um, Fastly is one that made a new high on uh, Friday. You can see it's just kind of making this base on base on base pattern and Friday broke out of that most recent base there. Um, and there you can see it, it's, it's emerging from that stage one and now uh, making new highs. So Fastly is definitely one to watch. It has the ability to really move. Uh, we've seen that in the past. So it's definitely one that I watch. PRGS is another one that I've had on my ready list. Um, you know, the market's been pretty tough. So it, it looks like it wants to pull away, but the general market conditions just kind of dragging it down a little bit. Um, it has shown the ability to move, but um, it's just kind of consolidating here in this current uh, tape. And Splunk, got to mention the Splunk, because on Thursday when everything was selling off, this thing was up, you know, what, 13% or something? Yeah, with, uh, you know, 500% above average daily volume, then tacked on nearly 3% on Friday. So that one looks good. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I've got one more thing, though, in honor of the great Steve Jobs. The uh, FTC finally came to its senses on uh, Friday afternoon, and I believe this is going to loosen up the drug space. Back in December, Amgen had announced that it was going to buy Horizon Therapeutics. This is December, yeah, December 12th. And it and it gapped higher, and then it's been sideways and even lower ever since. As the FTC says, it's going to interfere with this, uh, you know, this merger deal, where Amgen I think is paying like twenty eight uh, billion, you know, in a stock deal. And uh, there's really no reason for the FTC to block this. And uh, Amgen says their argument says that it's going to bring lower drug prices to the consumers. I don't know about that, but uh, it's certainly not a antitrust issue or monopoly. So. I, I really don't understand why they got involved, but this is part of the reason why your biotech and drug sector, the XBI has just been stagnant for so long is because the FTC is getting involved with these deals 
this one was up, you know, in the six percent after hours on Friday. Amgen might go down with the deal going through, but this looks like a nice cup with handle pattern here on the on a really big stock here. So I'm going to take a look, keep an eye on Amgen. Also, the Pfizer uh, Cgen deal will be affected by this because uh, if they're going to, you know. If they're going to, uh, you know, not interfere with uh, that other deal, they're probably not going to interfere with the Pfizer uh, SGE in deal. So this is good news for the uh, the market. You can see the here's the uh, the buyout here, the announcement, the news, and it just trades sideways and goes down when the FTC says, you know, they're really going to pursue this. And um, <clears throat> Now, you know, they're not going to pursue the Amgen Horizon deal, so I doubt they'll uh, pursue this one. This is up 4% after hours, so definitely something to watch on Monday and next week. And just the XBI uh, overall, you know, you got to hopefully this thing will shake loose. If you look at this thing just sideways, all of 2023 where the NASDAQ is up, you know, 20% or more, this thing has gone sideways, and it's really unfortunate that the uh, FTC would get involved with this because they're not uh, they're not a monopoly or anything like that. Anyway, that's my uh, opinion for today. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, and uh, at uh, mcstockcharts.com, we never give up.